All right, Jason, so this tank is kind of, we're going to take it out of service. We're going to condemn it. I need you to drain it down real quick, pop the valve off, and I'll come back and I'll show you how to how to drain or how to condemn it after the fact. Okay. Right. Looks like it's empty. Sure about that? I think it's got a lot more air than you think in it. I think you're right. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. I got two special guests here with me today. This is my daughter over here, Tessa. You've seen her in plenty of our videos. And this is the daughter of one of my dive masters. This is Miss Carson here. And we're gonna do a little history lesson with these girls. We're gonna see how much knowledge they have as current scuba rangers. And how old are you, Carson? Nine. You're nine, how Tessa? Eight. So we got a nine year old and eight year old. We're gonna see how much knowledge they have on scuba gear, but I'm also gonna be giving them a history lesson and how technological advancement, or how far we've come in technological advancements as far as reading air pressure and things like that. So girls, what we've got here is just a standard aluminum 80. This is what we all use, right? Mm -hmm. Well, y'all probably use 30s. Y'all use little tanks, right? I use the pony tank with you, but then in my other one I usually use uh, 60 30. 60 30, right? And Tess, you use a 30 all the time, right? So let, let me ask you a question. What does the tank actually do in scuba? It allows you to inflate and deflate and also breathe. Right, so it carries what in it? Air. It carries air, right? Mm -hmm. And how much air does it carry? Do you know that? Like how much air between like nitrogen and air? Well, no, just how much is inside? What's the volume of it? It's um, whatever size the cylinder is, correct? Usually cool. thousand. Yep. So, and what do we use to really gauge that pressure? Pressure gauge. Pressure gauge. Is that what this is? Mm -hmm. So, let's do that. Let's put a pressure gauge on here. And what kind of pressure gauge is this? Is, does this one work underwater? No, this one is an above water. That's right. So, this is just for above water. And it looks like there's only about maybe 100, maybe 200 PSI in this cylinder, right? Okay. It so, shows how much air you have. Right. Right. So if I wanted a gauge to use underwater, though, it would have to be a different type of gauge, right? It would have to be a submersible. Right, a submersible pressure gauge. And that's pretty much like what we use on our regulator systems, right? And this is just a submersible pressure gauge. It, it does the same thing that this little gauge checker does, but it's actually designed to be used underwater, correct? Well, back when I was your guy's age and I started diving, we had submersible pressure gauges, but they were really expensive back then, and my parents at the time couldn't afford one. So I didn't have any way to gauge how much air was in my tank. I knew when I went to the local dive shop to get an air fill, they would fill it up, we'd take their little pressure gauge, we'd put it on it, and we'd gauge it and see what was in it. But throughout the dive, I really had no way of telling how much air I was using. And it was really important back then that we were able to calculate what's called a SAC rate. SAC stands for surface air consumption. And we also had to calculate our RMV, which is respiratory minute volume. Now, just imagine when I was your age trying to do all that. That's, and Tessa, you're really good at math, but that's a lot to calculate in your head, right? And when you're underwater and you're focused on other things, you really don't think about your air. Anytime we want to know, we just look at a gauge. Well, we didn't have that. But what we did have is what's called a J valve. Now, typically speaking, this is what we use in scuba, right? It's just an on and off knob. Just turn it on and off. And this is actually called a K valve. A J valve looks identical, right? Except you'll notice it's got this extra little switch over here, okay? And this extra little switch was a reserve lever. So basically you would dive with it in the upward position and then when you ran out of air, for whatever reason, it would actually shut off before you were completely out of air. You would pull down and it would give you just a little bit of air. Does that make sense? If this was upward, does that mean, like, do you mean it has to be upward? Like you can't be doing a handstand and that has to <laughs> no, be upward? It, it just means there's a little device in there that's going to shut down at a lower pressure. And so when you get to that lower pressure, it cuts the airflow off. And to get that last little bit of air out of there, you had to open that valve up. That's all that means, okay? 
So what we're going to do is we're actually going to drain the tank all the way. We're just going to open it up and let that air just blast out of it. But we're going to be in the upward position. And then once it's completely out, we're going to put a gauge on it and we're going to open the reserve and see just how much extra air is inside the cylinder. Sound like fun? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So do y'all want to turn it on? Go ahead and turn it all the way, turn it towards you. All the way. Sounds like there's still a little bit of air in it, right? Keep on going. We're going to let this drain all the way down until it stops. It can't go okay? So we're going to sit here for a few minutes. We're going to let all the air drain out. I'm going to put a gauge on it, and then we're going to let you manipulate the lever to see just how much that reserve actually holds back. Sound good? Yeah. Awesome. Let's give it just a few minutes and see, what, see where it goes. All right, guys, so it looks like we're just about out of air, correct? Mm -hmm. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to test the demand lever, and we still got a little bit of hissing coming out of here. There's probably maybe 10 PSI left in it, but we're going to see just how much this demand lever is actually holding back. And just for a demonstration, I'm going to let you switch it, and then you're going to switch it back off because I want you to hear the difference. Mm -hmm. And then we're actually going to gauge it and see the, the pressure difference in it. Okay, so when you're ready, I want you to turn the demand lever down. Just turn it. There, see, there's a lot more pressure behind it, right? Yeah. We do it a couple of times. Sounds like there's a lot of pressure behind it, right? I'll do it a little bit faster. Now, it like it's, <laughs> now you can barely hear it hissing. Right, so for all intents and purposes, we would say that tank was empty, right? But yeah. then when you go to do the switch, you can hear that there's still plenty of pressure left. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put the pressure gauge on it. We're going to look to see that it's empty. Okay. So... It's turned all the way on, correct? Mm -hmm. What's the pressure reading? Zero. Zero? Now, oh, Tessa? Maybe one. If you will, push that all the way down, the lever all the way down on it. And there you can see it's at about 200 PSI. And that's basically how a J-valve worked. It would cut off around that 150 to 200 PSI mark. And then if you were ever in trouble and you didn't have enough air to make it to the surface, mm -hmm. these actually had a rod. And that rod connected here and it went down beside the tank. And so as you were diving, you just reach back and pull down on that rod. Okay? So like it kind of had like a string? Wasn't a type. string. It was like a metal rod, just a, oh. a piece of metal. And so if you were ever diving and you ran out of air, you'd pull down you on that. That's right. And it would give you about how much pressure or how much PSI Two, to get to the surface. 200. Right at 200 PSI, at least on this valve. Some valves did around 150. Some did about 200. But it's very, very important that we always monitor what? Your air. And how do we do that? Using what? Using a submersible Right. Gauge. And if we didn't have a gauge back then, we had to do the math in our head, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the problem with doing SAC rates and RMV rates, they're really based off a dive that is, say, a non-working dive, or you're always going to be at the same depth. And as you adjusted your depth, whether you went shallow or deeper, your SAC rate would actually change a little bit. So it was very difficult to actually monitor our gas and be accurate with it because we didn't have submersible pressure gauges. We had to have these back when I learned how to dive. Does that make sense? Did you learn something today? Yes. All right, so what kind of valve is this? Do you remember? A pressure valve. This is a K valve. Oh, yeah. If this a is a K valve. K valve, this is what? A J valve. A J valve. And the only difference between a K valve and a J valve is? This one has a... Reserve switch, Reserve right? Switch, yeah. Now, do you one little last bit of trivia for you. Do you know why we call this a K valve and not a J valve? Because this one looks like a J. Now, a lot of people would assume that, but actually, no. The reason this one's called a J and this was called a K valve is back in the day, you would actually order scuba gear like through catalogs, like through Sears and things like that. And whenever you would order through a catalog, oh, it had parts have, numbers. Yeah. Right. So like this a, was part K yeah. and this was part J. So we had yeah. a K valve and a J valve. So like at the like you'd have a picture of what it is and there'd be a letter. Exactly. And it has like like what the actual thing yep. is. So that is the history of scuba valves. Okay. Now we actually had some older than that. They were called pillar valves. We don't really use them anymore. We use them on O2 tanks, but we don't really use them on scuba cylinders. What are, what are O2 tanks? O2 tanks is what carries the emergency oxygen. You know all them green tanks that we use a lot? Yeah. yeah. Yep. So those actually use what's called a pillar valve. But these standard valves here came in K valves, J valves. J valves had the reserves. K valves don't because we don't need the reserves anymore. Make sense? 
Did you learn something? Yes. Awesome. What about you guys? You ever seen a J valve? I know they're kind of old school. They were even old school when I started, even though that we still use them on a regular basis. But if you like this video, if you want to see more of our kids in these videos, drop me a comment down below what you want to see these guys learn next. And give me a big thumbs up if you think they're cute. I think she's kind of cute, so I'm kind of biased there, right? So drop me a thumbs up there. Definitely share this video as well. If you want to see more vintage style scuba, uh, check out Alec Pierce's scuba channel. He's got an awesome vintage channel or a vintage playlist there. Uh, we will try to do some coming up in 2020 with you, some old school stuff from when I first learned how to dive. Um, but guys, if you liked the video, smash that like button for me. Definitely share it as well. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, you want to say it? Thank you for your business. Absolutely. See you guys. Bye, guys.